This is Peter Helland with Dr. Robert Smith on Citizens for Community Media. And I think we've decided on the title, South Bend Community and the Police. Uh, South Bend's been in the news, uh, obviously because of Mayor uh, Pete Buttigieg running for president. And there's been a lot of outside attention on the last shooting, which was a police officer at around three in the morning, just this last uh, early Sunday morning. Yes, Sunday morning. Um, we don't really know a lot, actually. Uh, we think there was a re call in that uh, somebody was going through the cars and, and near downtown. Police officer comes out and he claims that um, a particular man was uh, eventually coming at him with a knife. And he, and he had a a good reason to shoot him yeah. and, and then he died and there seems to be a lot of mistrust on his report because there was no body cam which should have been on perhaps right right even though we don't know much I thought it was important sooner rather than later for us to make clear how this process is going to work and and also to state the community's values uh, because the community is tested when there is an incident like this uh, the relationship between uh, the police officers who are sworn to keep this community safe and everybody who lives here is among the most important things we have as a city. Uh, and so when an incident like this happens, I want to make sure it's understood how it's dealt with, how it's approached, uh, and that we care. So we're dealing with the, the basic issue of mistrust, probably at the root here, of the community and the police and we've been involved in a long history right. of that, and maybe you can right. bring yeah. us up on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> within the South Bend Police Department, there's been a uh, recent uh, history of uh, tension or of uh, officers who have um, uh, violated people, people's rights or have... Um, been involved in some type of um, uh, disciplinary uh, problems or in a uh, uh, couple cases of violence against against regular citizens and 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 in each case um, uh, the uh, uh, there was no uh, discipline given for the uh, officers there was no guilt. Briefly, um, on uh, March 29th, um, 2012, like an officer, um, Nepler, um, and, and, and his partners, um, they were uh, executing a uh, warrant, but they went to the wrong house. And, uh, and, um, uh, one of the people that they did cause bodily harm to was a person who was asleep in his bed. And, uh, and the person was uh, uh, physically assaulted by uh, Officer Nebler there as he slept. And he finally woke up um, um, on his way to the hospital. Um, as a result of that, um, uh, Nepler was found uh, guilty in a federal court of, of violating the young man's civil rights. Uh, and then that's a federal crime. But then yet, Officer um, Nepler, he is still on the force. Um, and also um, on July, uh, uh, um, uh, then during the same uh, year, the, the summer of 2012, um, the officers approached a uh, clerk who worked in a 7-Eleven store and they forced the clerk to um, uh, drink uh, dry cinnamon or to swallow dry cinnamon. 
um, um, and and the officers um, uh, took the the surveillance tape that were in the uh, cameras at the stores. Um, once again, uh, no disciplinary action took place, um, um, and also uh, um, uh, the the city of South Bend did pay the clerk a monetary amount for the um, uh, uh, for being just assaulted by the officers there. And um, and then there's a list of uh, uh, dates and officers, but the problem is that the mayor and the city and the police chief do want transparency. But when the citizens of South Bend see that um, um, just assaults have been committed by officers and nothing is done. Like it raises doubt in the minds of residents as to are there, um, is there any type of corruption within the police department? And uh, such, um, such that um, the shooting that occurred this past Sunday on, on June 16th, like the officer did act within his um, rights of uh, defending himself, but it causes uh, people to uh, think, uh, uh, why wasn't the um, video on each officer wears a video camera on his body and the question is why was was the camera turned off and um, and also the person was transported to the hospital in the officer's car rather than calling 911 to have trained medical staff to come in and um, transport the person. The, the question that that raises is that if there was a trained medical staff transporting the person, they could have stopped the bleeding or either did something to help to save the person's life. Um, so, so the uh, problem for many of the residents of South Bend is, it is, um, can we really trust our police department? Uh, and the, and um, and 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 if we cannot trust them. Um, why not? And also the people who are um, serving in the administration over the police department, are they doing their job or are they being bullied by people within the police department? Um, those are some questions that, that people are asking. and. Um, and the shooting that happened, most people understand that the officer does have a right to defend himself, but it brings to their memory all the other issues that have been going on within the police department and nothing was done about that. So, so um, um, this is um, uh, this could be used as an uh, issue that the police department could use to improve their department, 
and um, so so the city officials and faith leaders they are calling for a independent just investigation uh, but we will have to wait and see what's going to happen so so that's a uh, brief um, overview of the past action and I have several others here which we can talk about later okay well let's, let's just step back and let's say we are <clears throat> you're a deacon in the church uh, let's just say we step back and say okay you're teaching a Sunday school class uh, and you're instructing the class on how do, how do Christians respond what's our duty and then I'm thinking of uh, st. Paul in first Timothy chapter 2 um, he says uh, some have um, made shipwreck of their faith, especially uh, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. And then he says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Mm -hmm. So if you take Paul there literally, he's saying, first of all, beyond, uh, it's like our number one duty. If we did fulfill that duty, and I don't, I mean, I don't yeah, see yeah. myself as right. fully com fulfilling that duty, and I don't feel good about it. But if we were to, how far would this help go to, to working at, because well, it says uh, here that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Yeah. Um, if those who are hired to protect and serve us would follow that as well as the citizens of South Bend we would not need as many policemen as we do have that's because um, um, it also says uh, elsewhere in the uh, Bible that the word is like a two-edged sword you know like it cuts both ways it's for those who are um, um, in authority just as well as those who are under that authority both must obey the Word of God you know and and, and if you have any one group who is trying to um, get around it um, um, they will certainly be uh, punished um, um, maybe not as badly as Paul had did those two but uh, but they will be punished and 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 for a government um, it is very hard to take the sin out of government after there's been many many years of it and it is very hard to take the sin out of people after they have lived it for many many years right so the corruption is not just in the police department right right you know um we don't know what, what this fellow was doing but the worst case scenario would be he was out there Right. breaking in the cars but we right. I mean, i'm not saying we know that but somebody called in apparently right 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 yes uh, uh uh it is safe safe to assume that a call was made and the officer just responded um um and he was found um uh, uh what what looked like he was breaking into cars and, and so, um, um, you know, uh, like you cannot use one person's uh, sin just to excuse another person's sin. And, and um, so, so um, um, uh, but the, uh, but, but, but those who are over us and, and, and govern us that group must show transparency and responsibility and um, and the police department has not shown that over the years 
with the number of incidents that they've had since 2012. And if you go back to, to prior years, there are um, many, many more than the um, several that were noted since um, March of 2012. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine who does a lot of traveling and he, he, says he could see himself like being in a car sleeping for the mm -hmm. night or something and he may very well be carrying a gun so mm -hmm. like if somebody's gonna break into this car that he's sleeping his car mm -hmm. that he's sleeping in he could feel his life in danger right right, right. and that he could get killed I mean you're, you're taking a chance if right. you're breaking the cars let's say somebody's in there right. that has a gun permit right, right. Um, I'm not saying that would justify from a Christian point of view shooting them right. but legally Legally, um, um, in in many of the states, uh, uh, there's a law, what Florida calls stand your ground law. Um, um, Indiana has something similar. If you f feel threatened, you can shoot, and uh, and 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 in Indiana, that is the case here. Um, um, and in many other states around the country too. Okay, what, okay. If you're in your home, of course, mm -hmm. if they come into your home, right. threatening you. Right. You have more of a reason, right. more, more, more reason. of a ground to shoot them. Right. Right. And if you're in your car, maybe there's something similar. If you are in your car, walking down the street, in a public place, and a person threatens you, under the Indiana law. If you feel that your life is being threatened, you can shoot. Yeah, but it can't be because somebody gave you a bad look. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, so there has to be. Um, so, uh, yeah, I do understand. Cause we, uh, we, uh, there was guys from Bible College right. uh, back in the early 80s, and from our church, we decided to go to one of the high schools, mm -hmm. and we were uh, witnessing. And I, was, I had my suit and tie on because I had to be at work, mm -hmm. and we we're passing out little 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 Bible tracks, and I get arrested. Yeah. I mean, it was completely bogus arrest. Yeah. And we were going to sue because I had to spend the night, and my boss mm -hmm. had to come and bail me out at yeah. the arraignment. And um, we didn't want to sue because we weren't we didn't want to get entangled. Yeah. And our job is just to do church work. Yeah. But um, we did ha require them to investigate. Mm. And we found out it was the police investigating themselves. Yeah, it was like I mean it was like a farce in our minds. Right. Okay, so I understand. Um, the, the South Bend has a unique, and, and I'm sure it's not just South Bend. No, 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 no. It it is everywhere. South Bend simply represents what's going on all across the country here. Um, such as there was a case um, um, late last year, where as a um, family were um, uh, having a cookout, and then a, another family thought thought they should not have one, so they called the police and reported that there were um, people who were not supposed to be in the neighborhood, you know, and, and the police came and, um, and they arrested the uh, father, um, and the father said, I live here, you know, but they still just arrested him, you know. And, and he's and, really the authority. Right, right, really authority, and, 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 and Similar to that, there was another case last year in which a father was babysitting a child and the child was in the back seat with his child and a car passed them and thought that that father should not be carrying that child with him. Thought that that was wrong. Called the cops and the cops came and um, uh, but, but this time the cop listened to what the uh, father 
had to say and um, and told the caller um, to mind your own business, you know. But uh, um, so so um, so that shows that um, that the authorities or the police, if they take the time to listen, they can usually get to the truth pretty quickly. If they don't listen and their mind is made up before they get there, they can make the situation worse. You know? No, remember before, well, let's say before all the immigration in Britain, mm -hmm. the police didn't have a gun. Right. Remember they had a, a, a bobby a club, club or what? Right, right, a club. A club. Yes. And they didn't go out with a, uh, they didn't feel like they needed a gun. Right. It seemed like they were more apt to listen. Right, right. But when you have the gun, yeah, it, it's too easy of a solution. Yeah, yeah. is that is that what you're saying, kind of? Right, right, right. Um, um, people will always take the easy way out, and then if you have a gun on you, it is so easy to just take the gun out of the holster, point and shoot. You know? Whereas if you have um, a taser or a mace or a club, you have got to do more listening. And um, and um, and in this case, with the uh, shooting on Sunday, like another um, question that comes up was extreme force used, meaning the shooting that the officer did have a taser, such that he could have tased the person too and um, um, uh, but um, uh, when we look at it from a Christian perspective um, if you listen first you will never be wrong because then you might find out what's happening right. remember uh, in uh, Romans um, 13 you know Romans 13 yeah where it, it kind of gives instructions there. Uh, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The mm -hmm. powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm -hmm. And then it says, um, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Mm -hmm. uh, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and you shall have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. Mm -hmm. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So this is kind of like a given, right? right I mean, right. it's assumed all countries right. function. Anyone who's a Christian, that is the way things function. They should understand that. But um, um, people can profess to be a Christian, um, however their actions indicate that they are not. You know? Well, I mean, it, I mean, if you just take it all the way back, okay, and you could argue, you know, Adam and Eve, and God said, mm -hmm. okay, don't eat the fruit off that tree. And God's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Why did he, yeah. you know, why did he have to have that rule? Right. Okay. Well, obviously God's not the bad guy. They just, they, why didn't they obey? Right. Okay. And then um, I like to, I like to get the big perspective. So um, the two big leaders of the American Revolution were John Adams and the only cleric, mm -hmm. John Knox Witherspoon, who tutored like a hundred of the founding yeah. fathers. Both of them from my reading, mm -hmm. both of them insisted that the king was not a tyrant. Right. And when Jefferson would say he was a tyrant, they'd stand up and say, mm -hmm. you're wrong. Yeah. Well, the king had the right to be a king, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And a king is, should exercise his authority. Right. right. A father should exercise his right. authority. But when you limit, you, you know, you, you say, well, you can't do this. And then you tell the father, mm -hmm. Well, we're going to put this check on you, this check on mm -hmm. you, and you and yeah. you reduce his ability. You know, the king supposedly was addressing the Boston Tea Party, and they had no right to throw that tea in. So the the, the company that lost all that money right. said, "Holy, we pay taxes. Right. You got to do something yeah. about this." Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, he does something, and he's mm -hmm. the bad guy. Yep. So uh, you're the father. You have a duty to yeah. rule your home and, and discipline when discipline right. calls right. for it. Right. But, but then you could be the bad guy. Right. And, and, and in this society, like authority figures always see the father as a bad guy when he tries to discipline his children. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's something that has to change. If, there's, if the child doesn't learn discipline at home, where else will the child learn it? Right, and that's part of the dad's responsibility. Right. Is right. to, I mean, I don't know how you would, you know, you could say a sergeant, your son's in the boot camp, you know, but, but the father, uh, Hebrews 12, mm -hmm. if you're a child of God, yeah. he is, God is disciplining you. Right. And if he loves you, he does right. not let you get away with your sin. Right, 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 right. And, and, um, um, if you look at all the problems that people say that the schools have, um, one problem they never talk about are the undisciplined children that who come to school and then when the school sends people out to visit the home of those undisciplined children, they find there are undisciplined parents there, you know, and, and such that you can lose hundreds of, well, hundreds or thousands or millions of kids if, if, if no one disciplines them. And a child does want discipline and a nation has to have discipline and the city of South Bend has to discipline itself too. You know? Right, it has to discipline itself and of course it has to know What's the goal of discipline? Well, the goal is, is holiness, right? right. And on an individual level. Right. Right. Because without holiness, you can't see the Lord. So the, really the goal is being able to see the Lord, which seeing, right. in a sense, is having eternal life. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's getting you on the straight and narrow because right. the other ways are destructive. Right, right, right. I mean, if a wise father tries to communicate, there's a reason why I'm disciplining you. Yeah. No, if you're in, if you're disciplined with, but, and there isn't a purpose, that can be a problem, oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yes, you do have uh, fathers and parents who go overboard. They will kill a child, you know, and 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 then that gathers more attention than the father who provides discipline. To the child, but but um, but there has to be a balance. Well, I'm gonna, uh, how about raising? Okay, um, Scripture says uh, if somebody doesn't take care of their own, they're worse than an infidel. Mm -hmm. Think take care of their own. But in, uh, what's happening for a lot of children is that before they reach 18, you could you could say it this way. It's kind of blunt, but it's saying the parents abandon them. Mm -hmm. You know whether they get divorced, but whatever the reason, right, right. they they give birth to the child, but they don't stay with the child right, for right, whatever reason until right, they're 18. Right. And so, how many children have been abandoned? Yeah. And nobody really says anything. No, no, no. And, and then that's another problem with the schools. You, you, you have parents who have given birth to children and these children uh, then are um, shuffled off to a aunt or a grandmother or 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 some other family and and there's no uh, discipline there and um, and the family that's taking care of the child they're simply looking at that monthly check that comes in you know um, and um, and it's um, um, that's a problem, and also a another problem is that kids in school may be um, um, classified as um, 
slow or they have some um, um, some just development uh, problem and the uh, guardian or the parent gets extra money and then um, and then when the parent is faced with the question of we're going to try to make your son or daughter better um, um, help their learning the guardian or parent don't want that that's because they will lose that extra money you know and um, um, uh, and that's another problem that we in South Bend and in most parts of the country have um, uh, uh, we are um, um, that love of money uh, uh, does cause many sins, you know, and and um, uh, and also um, uh, if this was a perfect society, we would not um, need as many just policemen, and then the uh, kids in school would be. Um, doing better, uh, the teachers would be doing better, um, we would spend less money, uh, but, um, but this is not a perfect world. And, um, and also, people have got to face facts. Um, um, uh, our new sheriff who, who um, took office um, January 1st, face the facts that um, in the St. Joe County Jail, a huge percentage of the people who are in jail, they, they have mental problems or drug problems. And, um, and the sheriff has no way of dealing with those people, but he's spending a huge number of resources dealing with people with mental problems and drug problems and um, but but you have to give the sheriff credit for recognizing what what type of people he have in his jails and um, and the problems that those people cause is that once they're out of jail they do the same thing they they basically do not commit a crime but they are uh, standing on the street corners uh, taking up space bothering people as they walk by such that the only the only alternative is to arrest them and to take them to jail. Well, that, that used to be the laws. <coughs> the laws of most people throughout history is called uh, vagabond laws. Yeah, yeah. If you're, uh, I know in my town, a little town, Wisconsin, uh, everybody better be owning up to, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, oh, I'm just standing here on the street corner. Well, that was not going to be acceptable. Right, you right. know, hold it here. We're working. Yeah. What's your excuse? Mm -hmm. And normally cultures don't allow that. Right, right. You know, right. you're just, you're, what, you're not going to work? I mean, you're not going to contribute? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's unusual that we're even allowing it. Right. But right. normally societies clamp down. Yeah. Uh, right? I mean, right. the homelessness is getting really bad, and some people prefer to be homeless when they could do otherwise. True. You know, there are people who, who want to live underneath the stars. They don't want a roof over their head. They want to be outside, and um, and 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 that type of living does not fit people that who live in a city. Those type of people need to be um, in the western part of the country, whereas they can pitch a tent. They can stay there. Um, that type of living is acceptable there, but 
But people who live like that in the city, sooner or later, they get caught up in the uh, alcohol and drug problems. And, um, and then um, right now, the only treatment is to, is to arrest them. Um, and um, um, Because the other people have a right not to be uh, <coughs> harassed by them. Right, right. Um, so, when you were younger, do you think the mental Ill, the mental problems were the same, or do you think there's a, a upsurge in well, mental problems? And what's is it sin behind mental problems in most cases? Well, there's a upsurge in in mental problems due to an upsurge in in um, population for one, you know, and also when I was growing up there were physical places that the mentally ill could go to and be treated, you know. Um, beginning with the uh, Reagan era, the number of mental hospitals were cut. People were just turned out on the streets, you know. We used to do church work way back, and yeah. Westville was a mental institute, mm -hmm. and I used to go there yeah. to minister mm -hmm. at the mental facility. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so um, um, <clears throat> treatment for mental illness and uh, people who have drug problems and no insurance, it's, they have a difficult time in finding a place where they can go to get help. And, and, um, as a matter of fact, uh, um, um, for drug problem, the closest place is um, hour and a half away, and um, and then homeless people and mentally ill people don't have transportation just to get themselves there, you know, uh, and um, and also um, what's to stop mentally ill people from having children either you know and um, so you're you're just making a problem uh, better um, I mean worse um, like you have to have facilities to take care of a person's um, mental illness or their drug problems but mental illness there's a little bit of area of subjectivity because I was, when I was at Notre Dame, I switched majors my, at the end of my junior year uh, to German, but up to the end of my junior year, uh, I was majoring in psychology. Mm -hmm. And we were taught that, uh, for example, homosexuality was a mental illness. Mm -hmm. And if you study why they changed it, there was a lot of politics involved. It, right. wasn't, it wasn't because there was real thorough analysis of yeah. what mental illness is and, oh, it's no longer that. So. Who's to say who's mentally ill now? Right, right, right. Uh, how do you determine it? There's no hard and fast rules, um, um, but there are certain standards that people have and um, such that most of your mentally ill people cannot sit at a table and carry a conversation on um, uh, and then those who can um, sometimes they have what's called schizophrenia and then one day or one hour they're the most calmest educated person you know and the next minute they're totally different you know? and uh, so um, um, there just needs to be a place where people can go to get help. And, um, but are we saying that this fellow that got shot, it's possible that he was uh, mentally ill? I mean, I don't know what the, I thought I heard he might have had yeah. like a rap sheet or not. I don't know. But um, um, sometimes it's, yeah. it, it, they kind of go, they intersect. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Um, um, we don't know, you know. Um, um, He's not able to tell us, and also no, no one from the medical field 
who has treated him has come forth to give any evidence of that. Um, and his family, uh, they aren't sane. And uh, uh, the problem is there's no evidence to make decisions on um, and such that the body cam that should have been turned on wasn't on. If it was on, that would solve a lot of questions. It would it would stop a lot of discussions because people could see with their own eyes what was going on. No, in our in our fellowship, we could. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of us. You know, in the Martin Luther yeah. King Club, we meet. Um, one of one of them. Um, Brother Walters said that on the west side, you always have two or three mm -hmm. police come right. for an incident. Right. Was, there a, was there something unusual that it was just a sole cop? <clears throat> That's another question on, on police procedures. Um, on the west side, there is a multiple police response to a call um, on the well near the city uh, within the city center of South Bend there is not um, um, and on the east side of South Bend there is usually a one officer um, just responding. However, if you're stopped for a traffic stop and 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 uh, uh, you are just suspected of um, having drugs in your car, the officer who stops you, the first thing he does is to call for help. There are usually two cars two police cars for a traffic stop, whether in South Bend, downtown South Bend, or on the east side, and in Mishawaka. Two cars. Um, and, and, um, and the police procedures, um, when people speak of those, how many people have actually seen the procedures or either read them? Um, seems to be something that the police department keeps as a secret. Well, sometimes the police don't even read them. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, and I understand why, from a human point of view. Mm -hmm. You just you've you learn what you think you have to do to get the yeah, job done, yeah. and sometimes those rules get in the way. Right. But that can backfire. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And 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 um, and, and then um, with a group uh, of policemen, there's a certain camaraderie that is held there. Everyone has to be a part of the group and the group has a certain way of thinking and acting and 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 sometimes that's good sometimes it's bad um, and 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 such that there can be a a Bible of of procedures and policies but if your sergeant or captain says this is the way it's going to be, that's what you follow. You don't read it, you know, uh, and um, such that that then does call cause a disconnect from what the chief of chief of police wants, which he puts in writing, versus what the officers actually go out and uh, execute because what the officers actually execute it is what they're told 
not what they read. Well, let's say, you know, you're an excellent father and you got a big family and you have your Bible study and devotions at home and you instruct your children. Well, I'm sure they're not going to go all out there no. and always be a perfect Christian. Right, right. Now, you've right. told them to be yeah. and they've nodded their head to it. Yeah. But the human being is such that. No. And, and you're not going to always have perfect children despite right. your you know, right. tremendous right. genes and all that. And you try to get the best police officers, mm -hmm. but realistically, you have to kind of accept reality at a certain point. I mean, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you don't, you're not always right, disciplining. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, uh, back in uh, um, 96 and, uh, well, 1996, the um, federal government did a um, study of, of various police departments. And the reason the study was done, um, they found corruption in a lot of them, you know. And so, so, so this term, the blue line or the, or, or the blue code came about, um, whereas um, um, uh, officers, in a group, they acted a certain way, you know, uh, they're, um, um, uh, if another officer just committed a crime, they would cover for him, you know, um, and, um, um, and so, um, 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 also, at the same time, they found out that um, um, uh, ninety percent of your officers are always trying to do the right thing. Hmm. Like it's only a handful, like ten percent or less, that are the uh, problems, you know. And uh, and but like anything else, only the bad apples get noticed, you know. Hmm. And and. Um, and it's like with your regular South Bend citizens, you only got, there are only a few bad apples who cause problems, you know. Those are the ones who are arrested and go to jail and um, sometimes they learn their lessons, sometimes they don't, and, but it's only a handful, you know, and, um, um, uh, but um, whoever coined that phrase, um, just to get rid of your bad apples, made a good term, uh, you know, said something wise, um, because if you do get rid of your bad apples, you don't have to worry about that, that problem. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So the, the solution would be, um, it has to be a realistic approach because you can't force them to be good. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the scripture is saying that we should, in humility, correct those in opposition if perhaps God could grant them the, the gift of repentance. Yeah. And, and if the, the policemen are unsaved um, you, you, can, you can't really control everything that they do right, right right yeah and and also sometimes we have unrealistic um, expectations of uh, people if you take Moses from the Bible he was raised as an just Egyptian prince he did everything that he had to do as an prince of uh, Egypt there, you know. When he found out that he was a Hebrew, he changed, but the change wasn't a total change. Um, um, uh, he then killed a, another person while in Egypt there. He was later, um, uh, uh, banded to the uh, 
desert. He had to run away. Right, right. <laughs> and he made it across the desert there. Then, um, then after he led the um, Israelites out of uh, Egypt there, like he still had some some um, disobedience in him. Um, this is uh, shown by when he uh, uh, when the people wanted water, <laughs> God had told him how to get the water. Speak to the rock. Right, right, right. Speak to it. He in turn hit the rock. Because he got so with, mad uh, at the bad people. Right, right. You worthless little. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, so, so the expectations that we have of other people, those people are never what they should be. They are just a work in progress, you know. It'll take time for them to be the Christian that they ought to be. It'll take time for them to be the person that they ought to be. And, 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 and for us who are watching them, we just have to watch ourselves that we don't uh, judge them more harshly then we judge ourselves. Because as you, me as you judge others, so the measure right, will come right, back on you. Right. I mean, just think, I mean, look at what people went through in Europe. Mm -hmm. I mean, under, let's say, the Gestapo right. or in, uh, in the Soviet Union, yeah. you had yeah. the right, right. KGB. And look at, at the time of Christ, those, right. those Roman soldiers right. were, were basically brutal. Right, right. And uh, the Jews were hoping that the Messiah would, you know, free them right. from this oppressive Right. Roman government mm -hmm. and Jesus said oh here's my solution they're mm -hmm. forcing you to carry their pack a mile carry an extra mile yeah you know it's like that's not what they wanted to hear right right, right. you know so the Christian response to oppression mm -hmm. and there's no doubt I believe the, the, the police are sometimes oppressive mm -hmm. wrongly yeah now what do we do as a Christian right. well it seems like Jesus kind of gave us some instructions mm -hmm. on that I mean, you you pray for them, right? Okay, because they probably have an evil heart, and then when they force you to go a mile, yeah, go take that it extra in, mile. He said, "Go the extra mile." Right. I mean, yeah. we have teaching to deal with in many cases. Right, right, right. But, but, but we have got to open our hearts to that teaching, and um, yeah, so, so. So if I were to summarize um, this shooting of June 16th, I would summarize it as, as a um, shooting that took place, a person died, and, um, um, and, and at this time on June 20th, we don't have any evidence or facts to make a decision as to whether the officer was was right or wrong right right and and if that was your son let's say mm -hmm. that the, 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 the police officer did the did the shooting was your son mm -hmm. you would probably even if you're a tough father you would probably say he has a right to have all the facts I mean let's mm -hmm. say everybody's accusing him right he has he has a right to have all the facts and presumed innocent mm-hmm until guilty right however the other on the other hand mm -hmm. the other guy doesn't get that chance right right <laughs> see so right. if that was your right. son the other fella right you're gonna be going yeah but we he's not allowed to be <coughs> assumed innocent <coughs> mm -hmm. you know we don't know how far the, the, you know maybe the knife was pulled yeah 30 feet away mm -hmm. so it is frustrating for the families and of course, the, the the only real comfort we would say as a Christian would be in the Lord, right? Ultimately, and the concern should be for the fellow that died, his his soul, his right. you know, where did he go? And that's the real tragedy why we should be hesitant to kill somebody, mm -hmm. because you, you could be sending somebody um, uh, to hell or heaven, right? I mean, would you want to have to deal with... No. 
I mean, I, I, where I get my hair cut, the, the barber was robbed, and the guy had a knife right on him, demanding money, and he said he had the gun right to his head. He, he was able to pull his gun out, yeah. and, but you know, the guy didn't know it, and he came that real close to shooting him. Yep. And, um, and it's affected him. I mean, th that would affect you. Oh, yeah. It would affect you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And he didn't shoot. He said he came, he said for some reason he came real close and the guy begged for mercy. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine if he had shot him, what that would do to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this is not, uh, this is not light stuff. It should not be just, um, taken lightly and that's why St. Paul said first of all before all things let's pray for those in authority mm -hmm. that we may lead a peaceful and a quiet life right but the assumption is you're not going to get a peaceful and a quiet life which is what everybody should want mm -hmm. um, but we do live in a culture that kind of likes drama you know right. it's, it's like they really don't crave that peace and quiet nope. all the time And uh, and you're getting older, and you have a lot of grandchildren, and um, and you're concerned about oh yeah, the, the, you know how what what they're going to be facing, mm -hmm. and, and so the ideal situation is is that the Christians get strong, yep. and they do pray for those in authority, and there and things can be peaceful, okay. because then your children and your grandchildren have a chance. Mm -hmm. to, to raise godly children right. themselves. Right, because all it takes is just one person with that strength of Christ in them just to cause a change. Right, where one bad apple can be, cause a mess, one yeah. good Christian right. can affect right. all kinds of people. Right. Right. And that's our hope. Um, thanks for coming on. I mean, at the last second, uh, of course, they called us and said they had this opening here, so we took it, and you were able to come on. Um, but this is an important issue, and this is um, Dr. Smith and Peter Helland on the show Citizens for Community Media, and hopefully, uh, this will uh, our discussion here could help people um, consider the Christian way how to respond, pray for the police, pray for the victim, uh, pray for the community that uh, people would hear the Lord speaking to them and that we would have the strength to respond properly. So um, until next time, this is uh, Peter Helen. <laughs>